Hey, I'm Steve Kranz for Guitar Gathering, your home for nuts and bolts guitar learning, just real solid guitar learning. We're in the middle of a series, How Music Works. This is the last installment of this. We have been through major scales and, and intervals and keys and key signatures. We learned about triads, we learned about sevenths last time. Now we're gonna learn about ninth chords, 11th chords, 13th chords, and everything else in between. So by the end of this session, you should be able to spell any chord that you will see in your entire life. Wow, that is a big, a big jump. So hopefully you have been with us for the last uh, four or five sessions. If not, go back and look at those videos and get up to speed on this. There's no sense in you going through your guitar life not knowing just the nickel's worth of music theory that's going to help you be the player that you long to be. Hey, there's a PDF that goes along with this. Uh, just click the link down below and that will get you to the PDF for these uh, How Music Works sessions. So we're going we're gonna to start, since we've already covered all those other things, we're going to start with ninth chords. Ninth chords. We've talked about triads, three note chords. We've talked about seventh chords, four note chords. Now we're going to talk about ninths, five note chords. Now, let me address this. We're going to eventually get to 11s and 13s, which have, you know, six and seven different uh, uh, notes in them. How on earth can we fit all of these in there when we only have six strings and really four fingers that we're playing with them on? Well, you, some things have to drop. So before we even get started, let's talk about what needs to drop. Generally, what's important in a guitar, in, in a guitar chord, in a guitarist perspective on chords, is the third, so I need to make sure and keep that. The third tells us whether a chord is major or minor. We generally need to keep the seventh because that's telling us whether it's a dominant seventh or a major seventh tonality. So those two pillars are important in any chord. Now, after that, you want it to, if, they, if the chord tells you it wants a six or a nine or a thirteenth or a sharp nine or whatever, then you probably better have that because it's specifically telling you that. So you need to have the third you need to keep the third, you need to keep the seventh, and then whatever color tone that they're asking you to do, uh, to have, you need to do that. Other than that, you can drop a few things. And occasionally in your voicings, things will need to drop. Well, one of the first things that you can safely drop is the one. You wouldn't think that you would be able to drop the root, but you can drop the root generally in most situations because if you're in a playing situation, the bass player is playing the root, the keyboard player is playing the root, everybody's playing the root, you can get by with not playing the root sometimes and have a rootless voicing. And the ear will interpret all the rest of those notes as if the root were already in it. So if you need to drop something, generally you can drop the root. You can generally drop the fifth unless there's something specifically interesting happening with it, it's diminished or augmented or something like that. But if it's just a regular old fifth, you can probably drop it and be okay. Um, so that's some ground rules as we get started. Let's take a look at ninth chords. If you remember back to sevenths, we ended up with six different types of seventh chords. Major sevenths, which is, if you had to build a formula for that, you would get the first, if I'm in C, you would get the first step in a C scale, the third step in a C scale, the fifth step in a C scale, and then the seventh step in a C scale. C, E, G, B, one, three, five, seven. That makes up a major seventh. That word major is important. That's telling you what type of seventh it is. So that's important. That's the magic word, major. So if you see major seventh, major ninth, major 13th, all of that is telling you about what's happening with the seventh. Now, having said that, remember from last time, all the rest of them are gonna be flat at seventh, except for one uh, uh, exception. But everything else is gonna be flat at seventh. So a dominant seventh chord would be a, a C, E, G, B flat, one, three, five, flatted seven. A minor seventh would be one, flat three, five, flat seven. An augmented seven would be one, three, sharp five, flat seven. A half diminished would be one flat three, flat five, flatted seventh. And then a, uh, a fully diminished seventh would be one flat three, flat five, and double flatted seventh. So I'm not gonna get into all of that since we covered that last time. But with that, so we ended up with six different types of seventh chords. Now let's go 
add one more third on top of it. So instead of just the one, the three, the five, the seventh, we're gonna add now another third on top of that. So I end up with a one, three, five, seven, and then nine on top of that, which is a D. Now that we're getting into the upper extensions, they're called, um, these are the same, like that D note is the same note as the second. So if you can always take an upper extension, subtract seven steps off of it, and you end up with the, the same note, okay? So a, a ninth is the same as a second, just um, uh, it's telling you that there's some other things in there. So, uh, so a, a major ninth would be one, three, five, seven, nine, as straight as that could be. If I was an F, it would be an F, G, A, B flat, C, F, A, C, D, E, and then a G on top of that. Okay, and that would be a major ninth. Now, I can't play all of that, so I have generally will choose a voicing that this particular voicing has the third, the seventh, the color tone, which is the ninth, and then the root. And that sounds, that gets that major seventh sound. Okay? All right, so think it out with me. Let's, let's do another one. What if I wanted to find a major ninth in, oh, I don't know, the key of, let's say, B flat, a B flat major ninth. So you gotta think what's in the key of B flat, B flat and E flat, two flats. And then we're gonna go one, three, five, seven, nine. All right, so you count it up here with me. B flat, C, D. So B flat, D, that's one and three. Now it's five, B flat, D, E flat, F, B flat, D, F, that's one, three, five, seven, B flat, D, F, G, A. Okay, if I add the ninth on it, I get a C, B flat, D, F, A, C. There you go. So what's the difference then between a, um, a ninth chord and a two chord? Well, a two chord is just the major triad, one, three, five, and then you add the second, one, two. So it would be one, two, three, five. But a ninth is one, three, five, seven, nine. So a ninth, being, being that it says ninth or 11th or 13th, is intimating that all of those other notes are underneath it as well. If it just says two or six, then it's, it's just a th triad and then the extra note. So there you go. That's a major ninth. So even though we've got more notes, there's only really only three ninths you need to worry about as a guitar player. Major ninth, one, three, five, seven, nine. The next one you're gonna run across is a minor ninth. So if you look at our ninth page there, and you look at that middle section, and it says minor ninth. It's a minor triad, one flat, three, five. Did it say the magic word major in the name? No, it did not. So it's a flatted seventh, one flat, three, five, flatted seventh and then you just slap a nine on it, okay? So if I was in the key of C, it would be a C, E flat, G, B flat, and D. C, E flat, G, B flat, D. Now, you may be tempted to think that it, oh, well, Steve, I get it. The ninth is always an octave up. Well, 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 not necessarily. How I voice those notes is completely up to me as the player and you as the player. Okay, so it, it doesn't necessarily mean that that ninth has to be an octave above that. It just means that that note and the seventh and everything else is all in there. Whether that note is low, whether I put that D here and then put the uh, E flat there, that's a C minor ninth as well. Sounds nasty though, because when I put that, that ninth low, Generally, those color tones, the ninths, the elevenths, the sharp nines, the, the 13ths, those sound best higher up in your voicing. But that's just how you particularly voice, the, voice it on guitar. Don't, don't misunderstand the theory behind it. The theory behind it, it's just a note, and you're just including that note in it, okay? It doesn't have whether, what octave is in is depending on how you voice it on the instrument. But here, the difference between this, nasty, C minor ninth and this same chord. All I did was put the ninth, which was down here, up at the top. So when it says ninth, then it is implying that there is a seventh in there as well.
okay? All right, so that's a minor ninth. So let's do another one. If I was in the key of, oh, I don't know, let's say um, A, and I wanted to do an A minor ninth. One, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, okay? The last song I played had a lot of minor ninths in it. An A minor ninth. Well, that would be, in the key of A, we've got three sharps. F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. So it would be A, then B. That would be the second. Then flatted third. So it's normal, normal third would be a C sharp. This would be a flatted third. So it would be a C, A, C. Okay, so there's the one and the flat three. What's the five? D, E. That would be an E. So we have, so far we have A, C, E. Uh, then the flatted seventh. Well, the normal seventh would be an G sharp, but I... It didn't say major in the title, so it has to be a flatted seventh. So I have A, C, E, G, and then the ninth. Very rich sounding chord. All kinds of different ways that you can voice it. You know, it's just... Um, all kinds of different ways that you could voice it. But that has to do with the voicing of the, of the, the chord, not necessarily the theory behind it. Okay? Um, the other type of our three types of ninth chords, we've talked about major ninths, we've talked about minor ninths. The only other one that you're gonna run across is a dominant ninth, C9, F9, G9, something like that. This, that's gonna be a major triad, one, three, five. Did it say the magic word? No, so it's a flatted seventh, one, three, five, flatted seventh, and then you just slap a nine on it. One, three, five, flatted seven, nine. If I'm in the key of C, it'd be a C, E, G, B flat, there's that flat at seventh, and the ninth. That's probably the most common voicing of it. And in this voicing, it only has four notes, so something dropped. I have a C, an E, oh, I don't have a G in it. I dropped the fifth, okay? A common thing to drop, okay? So those are your three types of ninth chords. Major ninth, one, three, five, seven, nine. Minor ninth, one flat three, five, flat seven, and nine. And then dominant ninth, F nine, C nine, something like that, which is a one three five, flatted seventh, and then ninth. Okay, so those are ninths. Plug them into the right thing um, uh, in the key signature, and you're ready to go. Okay, so that's ninths. Now, let's talk about elevenths. So if you look a couple of pages later, I give you some worksheets on the ninth chords and ways to ways to uh, work with those. But if you look at the page that says chord formulas and abbreviations, and look over to where it says elevenths. Okay, so now let's go up one more third, and now we're going to talk about elevenths. Now, in the big world of ours, you're actually going to only run into two kinds of eleventh chords: a dominant eleventh and a minor 11th, okay? So let's talk about a minor 11th first. The minor 11th, well, what's, what's, it's, what is that gonna be? Well, it's a minor triad, one, flat, three, five. Did it say the magic word? No, so it would be a flat seventh, then a nine, and now 11th. So I've got six notes in 11th chord, minor 11th. One, flat three, five, flat seven, 9 and 11. If you look, the formula's written right down there. Those are usually abbreviated M-I-N 11, or maybe a lowercase m 11. If you're in jazz, we use a lot of symbols, you'll see a, a minus sign, an 11th, okay, a minor 11th. So if I'm in, oh, I don't know, let's say a D, and I wanted a D minor 11th. Now, D minor 11th. D minor 11th. Well, D is one. The flatted third, normal third would be F sharp. The flatted third would be an F. So we have D, F. The fifth would be A. The flatted seventh would be C natural because the normal seventh would be a C sharp. I can't finger them all. Okay. We we'll add the ninth, okay, which would be the E. And then I have the eleventh, which would be a G. So you're talking about a chord that's got six notes in it, okay? Um, how I play minor 11ths on guitar is I have maybe this version, maybe that version. I don't really, maybe this version. I know a couple of versions. 
that one would be one. But other than that, there's three or four different versions that you would you could play on guitar. One flat three five, flatted seventh, ninth, and eleventh. Now, let's talk about something. The next chord that we're going to get into is a C dominant eleventh. Well, remember what I said. If I want to find out what note it is, let's say I'm in the key of C, the 11th, well, that's the same note as the 4th. I just subtract a seven steps from the 11th, and you get to the 4th. So the 4th is an F, okay, in the key of C. That's also the 11th, okay? It's the same note, okay? But that is only a half step away from the 3rd. So we end up with things that clash, this F and the E, kind of clash against each other. And we end up with strange sort of, it's just, you always end up with that clash of the major seventh next to that uh, eleventh, or the fourth. Okay, so how do we fix that? Well, typically, in like a dominant ninth, you would not play the third, okay? Typically, you would drop that third and keep the 11th and the 9th and the 7th and the 5th, but you could drop the third because, remember, I, and I hear I just told you never to drop the third, but in this one, in this one case of that 11th, since it clashes with that F and the E natural against each other, customarily, in a lot of 11th voicings, you will see that they drop the third. Okay, here's a typical C 11th right here. I have a C, the root, the flatted seventh, the ninth, and the 11th. No third to be found. So in practice, you have a tendency to drop the third in actual practice of that. In theory, it's in there, but in practice, it's not. In, in, in practice, I try and avoid that. It just doesn't make for good voicings. Um, okay, that's, that's, and that's basically 11th, C minor 11th, C dominant 11th, the minor 11th, and the dominant 11th. That's, that's really all you're going to come across in reality. Now, but why isn't there a diminished? Well, diminished, remember, is our repeating number chord. So it never actually gets to 9. It just keeps repeating. So you never see a diminished 11th. Then you'll never see it. And I guess theoretically, maybe there would be a major C major 11th. You'll never see it. Never see it. Okay? I've never seen it. I've been playing guitar a long time. Never seen it. The only sub 11ths you really see are the minor 11th and the dominant 11th. Okay? Let's get to 13th. All right. Here's the deal with 13th. You'll have a couple of three different types of thirteenths. Well, I even, have, I even include a fourth down here, although you'll rarely see that augmented 13th. The major 13th, one, three, five. It said major in the title, so it'd be just a regular seventh, then ninth. Now, 11th, we end up with that clash again between the 11th and the third. So customarily, you drop the 11th in that situation. You drop the 11th in the situation. In theory, it's there. In practice, it's not. Okay, so a C major 13th very pretty chord. These are all kind of jazzy sounding voicings with their larger uh, lots of color tones and things like that. Typically in a 13th chord, that 11th would clash with the third, so we drop the 11th. Keep the third and drop the 11th. A typical uh, a jazz uh, voicing of that would be C, uh, E, uh, G, which I don't even have in this voicing. Uh, B natural right there. The ninth is the D. I would drop the eleventh, which would be an F, and then I have the A. So there, this is a, a great C major thirteenth right there. And the thing I had, the thing that had to drop was the fifth. Okay. Whew! Lots of uh, numbers to keep track of. You're going to see that abbreviated M-A-J 13th or maybe a triangle 13th, something like that. One, three, five, seven, nine, 11th, but I don't play it, and then 13th, okay? Remember, and what's important? Thirds, the sevenths, and the color tone, the 13th. So I could really play that chord like this 
which is the third, the seventh, and then the color tone, and get by with it. Okay. Um, let's go to the minor 13th. All right, well, then it's a minor triad, one flat, three, five. F did it say the magic word? Nope. So it's flatted seventh, ninth, 11th, but I don't play it, and then the 13th. So if I was in C, it'd be a C, E flat, G, B flat, D, there's an F, but I don't play it, and the high A, a minor 13th. Um, different from a minor 6th, because when it says 13th, it's got all that other stuff underneath it, the 9th, the 7th, all that sort of stuff. When it just says six, it's just the minor triad with an added six step. Okay. All right. Um, that's the major 13th, minor 13th. The dominant 13th is a dominant seventh, one, three, five, flatted seventh, ninth, 11th, but I don't play it. And then the 13th. Okay. So do you see how it's, the main part of a chord is the triad. That is the root of the tree. And then the seventh, that, that is part of that trunk as well. These ninths, these elevenths, these thirteenths, those are like ornaments hanging on the tree. So don't get too knocked out with those when you see them in music. Oh my goodness, this is a whole new wild type of chord. No, a C major thirteenth, if you need to simplify it, you can just play a C major or even a C major seventh or a C major ninth. C major 13th is the full chord, but if you need to simplify it, you could just go right down to the trunk of the tree, which is a C major or a C major seventh, okay? All right, uh, dominant 13th is a one, three, flat seven, nine, 13th, we talked about that. Augmented 13th, you'll never see it, but if you did, it would be one, three, sharp five, the augmented triad, the flatted seventh, the ninth, the 11th, but we don't play it, and then the 13th. One, three, five, flatted seventh, nine, 11th, but we don't play it, and then the 13th. Those are the four, oh, I'm sorry, for the augmented 13th would be one, three, sharp five, okay? Um, and those are the types of 13ths that you're gonna run across. All right, so we've covered, whoo, sevenths, major sevenths, minor sevenths, diminished sevenths. We've covered ninths. We ended up with major, minor, and dominant on that. Elevenths, we just ended up with minor and, and dominant. On thirteenths, we've ended up back with major, uh, minor, and dominant on the thirteenths. And that's as far as we go. Now, there are some other chords, so let's talk about those. I can also have alterations to chords. And this is things where you'll start to see um, things in parentheses, okay? A C7 parentheses flat nine. So what is that telling you? Well, that's a C7, one, three, five, flat at seven. And then you do whatever, you just add, you put the ornament on whatever it tells you to do inside that parentheses. It wants the nine, but it wants it flatted. So that a C7 flat nine would be a C, E, G, B flat. That's a C seventh. And then the ninth would be a D, but they don't want the ninth, they want the flat ninth. So it'd be a D flat. C, E, G, B flat, D flat. So I just, once something is inside the parentheses, then I just do whatever it tells me to do. Sharp the nine, flat the nine, flat the fifth, sharp the fifth, um, flat the nine, and sharp the nine. You'll see sometimes two things inside the parentheses. You just do whatever it tells you to do um, and add that particular note to the voicing. A C7 sharp nine would be a C, E, G, B flat, and then D sharp. I take the ninth and sharp it. Okay, um, and that's basically how those alterations will work, altered chords in that sense. Um, in that sense. Now, there are a couple of other forms that you're gonna need to look at. If you look at the little, uh, the little section that says other chords, other chords, you'll see occasionally a two chord, okay? What is a two chord? We mentioned that a little bit earlier. That's a, basically all of these twos, sixes, things like that, you're just gonna add that particular note to a triad. So it'd be one, three, five, and then you'd add the second. One, two, three, five, okay? So a C2. One, 
three, five, and then I add that second in there too. So notice it sounds different than a then when I add that flat at seventh, this would be the dominant ninth. But a two chord takes that seventh out, and so you're just left with a two. Sometimes you'll see that as an add two, C add two, F add two, that sort of stuff. Um, what's another one? You're gonna see the five chord. Hey, C5, F5. That's a very formal way of writing a power chord. What is that? Hey, roots and fifths, baby. No thirds. This is rock and roll. You have root, fifth. Maybe even another root. Maybe even another fifth. Just roots and fifths. No third in sight. No thirds allowed. Those are power chords. Okay? Power chords. They're neither since they don't have the third, they're neither major or minor. So you can get by with playing a power chord voicing in minor songs and in major songs because they are neither major or minor. They are just roots and fifths. If you want that good growly sound. If I don't want to sound like a G major sweet, but I want a good G but it's growly, I do a G5, a G power chord. Listen to all those notes, they're all just roots and fifths. G, root, D, fifth, G, root, D, fifth, G, root. Roots and fifths, okay? Um, that's what fives are. So if you see C5, F5, B flat 5, A flat 5, those are all power chords. Now, let me mention something that's going to confuse you as it has confused guitar players throughout the ages, okay? What if I had on the page written a B flat five. B flat sign five. What is that? Okay, is that, do they, is that a B chord with a flatted fifth? And the answer is no, 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 no. Because if it wanted that, it would put the flat five in the parentheses. So if it, there's no parentheses in sight, then it is not a B with a flat five, it is a B flat chord five, okay? Very important difference. You're gonna get confused on it as everyone gets confused on it, okay? Is the flat sign applying to the root or is it applying to the, the color tone? And it is always applying toward the root unless it is inside the parentheses. Kind of like just mathematics. Uh, whenever you have something that's inside the parentheses, that's just you do whatever it tells you to do there. And that's how that's solved. Okay, um, all right, let's talk about suspended chords. Suspended chords. Um, all right, here's the deal. In America, we interpret suspended chords as dealing with the fourth, as substituting, suspending, substituting the use of the third, and we're gonna plug a fourth in its place. C sus, suspended, okay? So a C suspended would be one, four, five. One, four, five, no third. It's not one, three, five, and then an added fourth. No, it's one, four, five. I'm substituting the third, something else in place of the third. Now, where this came from is the European tradition, and how they do it is they very much view that as you're suspending the third, you're substituting the third for either one of two directions. I can either go up, I can replace the third with the fourth, when you end up with a one, four, five, or I can also, you'll see sus two sometimes. And what that is, is I'm now suspending the third for the second, one, two, five. Okay, now how that didn't cross the pond, we lost a little something as that crossed the pond and so here in America, where we like to shorten things, when it says sus, it's referring to the fourth, one, four, five. But if I was reading a, a piece of music from the European tradition, it would say sus four, which would be the same thing, one, four, five, or it might even say sus two, which is one, two, five. So just realize that slight difference between the European and the American way of doing uh, chords, okay? Um, so that's why 
a suspended, and a suspended fourth, sus, c sus, and c sus four are the same thing. It's the same thing, okay? Um, what else we got? We got a sixth chord, you're gonna see that. Major triad, one, three, five, then you add the sixth, just like the two chord. Major triad, add the two, c two chord. For a c sixth chord, one, three, five, and just add the sixth, okay? Different from the 13th, the 13th, even though it still has the same note, 13th is saying all that other stuff, the 9th, the 7th, all that stuff is still in there. A C 6th is just the 1, 3, 5, and a 6, okay? Uh, sometimes you'll see a minor 6, 1 flat 3, 5, 6, okay? Um, sometimes you'll see in jazz a 6, 9 chord. Okay, what is that? That's a 1, 3, 5, and you add the 6, a tricky, 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 and you add the nine. You add a six and you add a nine. Uh, C, six, nine. One, three, five, six, and nine. Uh, remember the ninth is also the second, so there you go. Okay, now that is basically every chord that you're 99% of the chords, and I would say almost every chord, I've been playing guitar a long time, the, what's on that page in chord formulas and abbreviations is pretty much every chord that you're ever gonna see. Now, uh, sometimes you'll see in the altered chords, you'll see two things altered. You know, what if I had a C7 flat 9 flat 5? Okay, what would that be? A C7 flat 9 flat 5. Well, that would be a C1, 3, E, G, but they don't want a regular 5, they want the flatted 5. So it'd be C, E, G flat, then a B flat, and then a uh, what did I say, flat nine, flat five? Uh, a D flat, so it'd be C, E, G flat, B flat, D flat. There you go. So you gotta be just do whatever it tells you to do inside of the, the um, um, parentheses for that. And there you go, okay? So my goal with all of this was getting you to where you could look at any piece of music you find yourself in, any piece of music, that has chord changes in it, and immediately, as soon as you see that chord change, you have the tools to, to find out what notes are in that chord, what notes are active. That helps you when you're trying to solo over C minor ninth. I know what notes are active in that C minor ninth, and I can play those, and I'm not gonna sound wrong. So, armed with the, your information of scales, and keys, and intervals, and triads, and sevenths, and ninths, and beyond, now you shouldn't be stumped by any chord that you find yourself in. All right, so let's play a game. You ready? Here's your final exam. Whew! It's your final exam. You ready? Here you go. If you have a pencil, you're going to write it down. Here it is. This is your final. I would like for you to spell for me a G flat 13th with a flat 5 and a sharp 9. A G flat 13th I'll even write it down here so I remember it as well. G flat 13th with a flat 9, or excuse me, I said flat 5 and a sharp 9. Okay, that's your final exam, okay? You ready? F start figuring it out. I'll play you a little music while you're figuring that out. Here we go. You ready? Woo! A G flat 13th with a flat 5 and a sharp 9. It's impossible. No human can do it. You ready? What are you, some sort of musical genius or something? Let's figure it out together. Well, in the key of G flat, key of G flat, you've got six flats there, chief. 
A G flat scale is G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, and a G flat. How did I know that? Am I some sort of a musical genius? No, because we went through back in the scales and we learned about that, about how many flats are in each different thing, okay? So we know that that's a G flat scale, G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, and G flat. All right, so it, the formula is going to be one, three, flatted fifth, because it doesn't want the regular fifth, it wants that flatted fifth. Then, did it say the magic word? No, that would be a flatted seventh. And then what kind of nine does it have? Well, it has a sharp nine, because they just said you're going to do that. And then the 11th, but we wouldn't play it, but it's in there. And then the 13th. So the formula for this thing is going to be 1, 3, flat 5, flat 7, sharp 9, 11th, but I don't play it, and then 13th. So in the key of G flat, you just got to plug in the numbers. The 1 would be a G flat. What's the 3rd in the key of G flat? Well, that would be a B flat. What's the 5th in the key of G flat? Okay, wait a minute. G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat. A D flat is the 5th, but they don't want the 5th. They want a flatted fifth. So remember, we have to do a doubly flatted D. D double flat. D double flat. Steve, isn't that a C? I know that's a C. You know that's a C. Everybody knows that's a C. But in theory land, in chord spelling land, the note name tells its function. So we have to write the... So I don't care. It's going to be some kind of a D. I don't care how bad I have to screw it up to get the right place, it's gonna be some sort of a D. So, so far we have one, three, flat, five, which in the key of G flat would be a G flat, B flat, and a B double flat. Excuse me, a D double flat. G flat, B flat, B, ah, G flat, B flat, D double flat, okay? Then we need a flatted seventh. Well, the normal seventh in the key of G flat would be an F, but they want a flatted seventh, so it'd be an F flat. Don't, don't write E. Don't do it. I know you're wanting to. Don't do it. It's got to be some kind of an F. It's going to be an F flat. Okay, now I need the ninth. Okay, well, what's the ninth in the key of G flat? It's the same as the second, so that would be G flat, A flat. Okay, but I don't want the ninth. I want the sharp ninth. So I turn that A flat into an A. The eleventh would be the same as the fourth, which is a C flat, but we don't play it. So I'm just going to put that little parentheses around that. And then the 13th, that would be the same as the sixth step, G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat. You ready, kids? A G flat 13th with a flat 5, sharp 9, is a G flat, B flat, D double flat, F flat, A natural, a C flat, but I don't play it, and an E flat. Boom! Baby, there you go. Woo, doggies, okay? Now you know how to spell that. Now, oh, Steve, I, do I need to know how to do that instantly? Well, with practice, it'll get quicker. And spelling complex nonsense like that, you're always gonna have to figure that out. Shoot, I have to figure that out. You just gotta figure it out, okay? Um, what would you solo over that? Well, I probably would pick one of the notes that it's telling me that it's special, the flat five or the sharp nine. Uh, the 13th, maybe, and do it that way, okay? There you go. We have now solved all of those chords. You're not going to run across a chord that we have not in some way touched. If you do, shoot me an email, and we'll figure it out together. All right, hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering. I hope you've gotten a lot out of this How Music Works series, and uh, stick around for more learning. We will see you next time.